Well, good morning, everybody. Renee coming to you from our living room today. I want to pass on an Instagram post that Adrienne Moreno, one of our pastors, forwarded to me. This is from somebody who calls herself Coach Colleen, and I want to show this to you. She says, I met, fell in love with, and married a man who was white, military, law enforcement, and a gun-toting conservative. I am none of those things. And then she goes on to say this, one of the things that I fundamentally believe is that you can believe this and that. I believe that black lives matter and I have the utmost respect for law enforcement because it's one of the hardest careers to do. I believe in peace and civility and there's a time for discourse. I believe that there are amazing cops who respect the responsibility that comes with the badge and those who abuse their power and should never have been issued a badge to begin with. She says, the day my husband graduated from the police academy was one of the proudest days of our relationship. His training was intense. He'd come home on the weekends with bruised ribs, black eyes, and a whole host of physical injuries for seven months. But the day he graduated was the day the fear set in for me. He worked nights and weekends, and I would pray every single night for his safety. I still pray for our law enforcement. I pray that they have good judgment. I pray that they show compassion. I pray that they make good decisions. I pray that they have a heart of service. I pray that the good ones outnumber the bad ones. I pray that they make it home safe to their families. And of course, this has such added poignancy because of what just happened in our county. And she goes on. And I pray for my fellow black brothers and sisters. I pray that we survive. I pray that we are afforded the same level of fairness before somebody decides to be judge, jury, and executioner. I pray that we make it home safe to our families. I can pray both prayers and trust that God hears them. The conversations happening in homes, friend groups, and communities are hard, but necessary. Listen, contribute, be honest, and approach with grace. Man, I don't know about you, but I really love that because I think it reflects scripture. You know, disunity may have been the biggest problem that the early Christian church faced. How do I know? Because Jesus and the apostles talked about it so much. You see, Christianity was probably the first movement in history that was not based on shared skin, shared ethnicity, shared nationality, shared language. It was only based on shared faith. And that meant by definition, people with different politics, people with different skin color, Jew and Gentile, male and female, slave and free, were going to be worshiping together in the church. And so they were gonna to have to learn how to have unity without uniformity. And that's why there's great verses like Romans 15, seven, Christ accepted you, so you should accept each other, which will bring glory to God regardless of race, politics, socioeconomic level, gender, accept each other, honor each other, see each other as people created in God's image, loved by God. Man, I'm excited about how we can show that kind of love to one another and thereby bring glory to God. Hope that uplifts you too. God bless you. Have a great day.